Now, Scotland is hardly a country known for having a peaceful history, especially when it comes to clans. Yet, most clan battles down through Scottish history were organic, spontaneous events, and not pre-arranged battles in front of a crowd, like a gladiatorial event in ancient Rome. This is what makes the Battle of the Clans so intriguing, and frankly, so bizarre. The story of the Battle of the Clans also gives me the opportunity to discuss a fascinating clan in the history of Scotland, Clan Chatton. Or is it a clan? Let me tell you more. Now today I've taken you to the beautiful Northinge Park in Perth, the site of the Battle of the Clans that's also known as the Battle of the Northinge that was fought here in September 1396. It was fought between Clan Chatton and an opponent we're not 100% sure of. It has been referred to as Clan Quill, thought to mean K, but this has been challenged. And many argue it is much more likely that the opponents on that day were Clan Cameron or Clan Davidson, but more on that later. Now, what we are sure of is that Clan Chatham was involved one way or another, and it gives me a great opportunity to discuss a fascinating and very powerful clan in the history of Scotland. But Clan Chatham isn't quite a clan. It's a confederation of clans, around 12 or so, with associated branches. Back in the day, each of the clan chiefs were recognised under Scottish law, but they were unified under a superior chief of the confederation for protection and strength. Similar to how the US is made up of different states but has a federal government. Now, there are a few interesting theories about where Clan Chatton gets its name. It may come from Catty, who were a tribe of Gauls that were driven out by the Romans. Another theory is that the name comes from Catav in Sutherland, in the very north of Scotland. The most widely accepted theory, however, is that they are descended from Gilla Chatton Moore, who was the great servant of St. Catherine, an Irish monk who preached in Scotland. But what clans made up Clan Chatton? Well, here is a general overview. The original Clan Chatton was thought to be made up of Clan Catanact, Clan McPherson, Clan McPhail, and Clan McBean or McBain. Then Clan Macintosh and their cadet branches joined, such as Clan Shaw, Clan Farquharson, the Riches, and Clan McThomas. The Macintoshes played a major role in Clan Chatton and still do to this day. Other clans that made up Clan Chatton included Clan McGilvery, Clan Davidson, the McLeans of Doc Garrick, the McLeans of Strathderan, the McIntyres of Badenoch, and the McAndrews. Now, one of the main seats of power of Clan Chatton was at Tor Castle near Fort William. In the late 13th century, Clan Cameron seized the castle and sparked a feud between the two clans that would last until the 17th century. Now, at the Battle of the Clans, one popular theory is that Clan Chatham fought their bitter rivals, Clan Cameron. The Battle of the Clans itself was a staged but very real battle, at the King's behest, where 30 men were selected to represent each side in front of spectators, which included King Robert III of Scotland and his court. As the battle was about to kick off, one of the McPhersons of Clan Chatham fell sick, leaving them a man down. Remarkably, a volunteer named Henry Gow, or Smith, agreed to step in for a fee if he survived. Imagine that. Barriers were erected to stop spectators encroaching on the battlefield, and King Robert III took up his position on a platform. The warriors were armed with swords, targes, or shields, bows and arrows, knives and battle axes. The two clans lined up in a purpose-built enclosure on the North Inch. We know from the accounts of the Exchequer during King Robert's reign that there is an entry in 1396 for the expenses of the battle, which is pretty mad to think. Quote, For timber, iron and making of lists for 60 person fighting on the inch at Perth, 14 pounds, 2 shillings and 11 pence. Walter Scott gave a romanticised account of the proceedings in his work The Fair Maid of Perth that helps to paint a picture. The trumpets of the king sounded a charge. The bagpipes blew up their screaming and maddening notes. The combatants starting forward in regular order and then increasing their pace, till they came to a smart run, met together in the centre of the ground as a furious land torrent encounters an advancing tide. Blood flowed fast, and the groans of those who fell began to mingle with the cries of those who fought. The reason for the battle is thought to have been to settle a dispute, hence why the Chatton Cameron theory is so popular. 
The story goes that King Robert sent two of his generals into the Highlands to stop Clan Chatter and Cameron feuding, but a resolution couldn't be found without a full-scale war. A staged battle was then agreed upon, with the winner gaining royal favour. Other theories argue that it wasn't Clan Cameron, however, but it was to settle an internal dispute within Clan Chatton itself, probably between Clan Macintosh and Clan Davidson. Although we do know that members of Clan McPherson were at the battle, but potentially fighting on the side of Clan Macintosh. It was a very bloody affair regardless. 19 out of the 30 died from the Clan Chatton side, or the Clan Macintosh side if it was an internal battle whereas the other side was decimated. 29 out of 30 of Clan Cameron, Clan Davidson, or whichever other clan made up the opposing side was killed in a devastating defeat. The only guy from the opposing side who survived only did so because he swam across the Tay. Our friend, the volunteer named Henry Gow, or Smith, survived however, and apparently held his own in the battle. Yeah, go on Henry. He is said to have been invited north to join Clan Chatton, and from him descends the Clan's Gow or Smith sept. But who do you think made up the opposing side at the Battle of the Clans? Please let me know in the comments below. Speaking of clan battles, what happened at the Battle of Glenfruin, and why was the clan named McGregor banned for centuries? To find out, please click here. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell. Uh, for ways to support, including through Patreon, they will be in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.